Hello and welcome back to the garden. Now we are a little bit late this week with the wind and all the rain with Storm Kathleen one thing and another and then we have visitors for Easter so we didn't really get down here. We're down today and I've started putting the broad beans in. I have a couple more to put in I'll just show you while we put those in. Then we'll cover them up, keep pigeons up and we'll be all right then until when they get up to the top of the net we just take them out. I have put nearly two rows in as you can see uh, and we have just a couple more to put in but I want to show you using the fertilizer especially down this bottom because it's been wet and underwater quite a while so all the nitrogen will be washed out so we need to replace that or the plants will suffer it's just I'm just using these the slow release granules as you can see the declaration on them is 22714 so there's plenty of everything what these plants will want to get and it's a slow release for the season but as soon as it starts releasing these will pick it up and soon be away so just scatter a little bit in the hole up first when I've finished I've already done my pen I just scatter a bit between the rows and just rake it about so it's got that little bit extra we did have a little bit of aphid problem as you can see there look but I sprayed them with some pyrethrum and they're perfectly all right now so we'll get them in just pop them in always always green end up remember Um, because the ground is still quite wet I'm not over tightening them because it's clay land if you over tighten them now when it dries out it'll set solid and we don't really want that we just pop them in good rooted so we're all right they have been hardened up it's the only way oh, grow broad beans on this land and being so open to the well not the elements is the vermin the pigeons etc that come in uh, I can't do autumn set broad beans I have to do them in the greenhouse and put them in now we've put them in the ground before covered them up with nets and everything and the mice have them so this is the only way for us even though they're a cold weather plant we just can't get them in but then again I couldn't have put them down here because of all the wet we've had we just give it that little bit between the rows at this end and then there you go don't want a lot a bit more than that though there you go and it's a uh, it's a continuous release so the plants will love it there you go and then we'll take the line out and cover them up Now, what I've noticed with the garlic this year, a lot of the leaves have come up wrapped in one of the outer leaves. I'll show you out in a moment what, what it's like. I've never seen this before, whether it's something to do with it being a very, very wet season or the floods, I don't know. This is what I'm finding, look, that we're getting a round, <coughs> pardon me, a round leaf where we should have a nice open like that one and there's quite a few lot, quite a few so what I've been doing is I've been putting my nail just inside the skin of it pulling it up 
Yeah. Like that. And then carefully opening it. You can see where that leaf's look concertina down because it can't get up. So at the cost of this leaf I think we'll release the others. And there they are. And this one is not round like that one, they will be fine like this again. I don't think we'll get a good garlic bulb out of these that have gone odd. But I've, that's what I've been doing, just slicing them up and opening them. There's one or two have done and they've started growing again, but I don't know whether they'll make it or not. The other thing, with all the water that's been on these garlics this year, I'm convinced there's going to be a lot of rust on them because garlic really likes to grow well in nice, as you know, um, nice well drained light soil and these poor devils have been swimming all winter so we'll see what happens. Now the next little job is to get some of these Aaron Pilot first early potatoes in. I've already done one row but obviously, like everybody else, I've been waiting for the land to dry out a little bit. I have managed to cut a trench, and um, so I've got them down. Let's pop them in and cover them up, so at least we've got some in for some nice early crops, or late early crops. So we've got the trench out. Uh, we've had that much rain, there was actually water in the bottom of the trench, but it seems to have cleared now. We just dropped some of this fertiliser in. Just a bit. When the potatoes are growing quite strongly, I will give them some more feed on the top and then just rake it in. Now, this will do at the moment to give them that first boost, get them going. There you are, they're the potatoes we've got. Sprutting well. Uh, now with your early potatoes you can put them a little bit tighter together. So I should space them out and then see how many we've got to get in this row. Then if they want another half a row we'll do that. Ooh. I'm having to stay on these mats as much as I can because it's so wet. I'll be sinking centre and then and then centre. We'll put two in there, I think. That's better. Yeah. Go there. They say you can put them a lot tighter together, these earlies. You can't do your second earlies in your lakes like this. And also, if you wish, you could cut that through there with the knife and set two. But we tend not to, I don't know why. Um, that there, I think. Now, all I do now is I just cover them up. But you can see this is drying out a little bit, so it's quite hard. So I'll start at that end and carefully start breaking it and raking it in. Anyway, this end's not so bad because it was a little bit more a little bit drier than what it was at the other end when I dug the trench. This is not bad at all. I'll just settle it down a little. See this is quite hard. But we'll get it in. Right, so if you just bear with me I'll get them all done and show them in. That's the 
two rows first earliest Aaron pilots plenty of room between so I can walk up and down keeping them clean etc I've put the short canes in so I know where they are so I can just keep raking etc with this rake just to keep the weeds down now we'll go and show you how I'm getting on putting these frames up now as you can see I have started putting the frames up uh, I shall leave it a short while before I put the covers on because the plants aren't quite ready yet I've had to keep doing it between rain showers etc it's been quite a job but I've got uh, the three doubles up first these are the ones that dice sown two insect mesh down the centre for me on her machine and so I can do a double funnel rather than all singles and it works well because the one over there that one will tall one will be for the brussels because they get quite big in there this one will be for the summer cabbage and the summer cauliflowers this one will be for the celeriac and the kohlrabi they do need a bit of protection from the insects because they do attack the kohlrabi and the celeriac quite bad the one over there it's not quite finished yet it just wants the three top pieces putting on it that will be for the carrots as you can see the carrots we put in I've just put that mesh over them just to protect them a little bit there's nothing coming up yet then now one of you guys have asked me about the sizes and how I make these and where the video is I do believe it's video 44 that we did but also Diane's put you the picture um, and the sizes that what I use to make these quite some time ago now and they've lasted ever so well although I do try and paint them every year the main thing with the sizes is the width of your insect mesh your insect mesh all these have been uh, designed so the insect mesh touches the soil at both sides so I can pin it down and if you make them too big obviously the insect mesh is not going to hit the bottom but that's that's the main thing the rest is just screwed and nailed together and put plenty of paint on that'll keep them going some of them if you think that some of these arches uh, have been on the go for seven years now so it does last well So now we're just going to nip into the fruit cage and put a few dwarf peas in. I don't know if you can remember but we set some peas, some early peas, in the greenhouse in some trays. They've actually come up and I've put them in here for just three rows. These are those meteor peas that we set in the greenhouse so they're doing fine. Meteor of course is a very dwarf pea you, Sometimes you don't need to give it any support But if you do I just put some of those green sticks in just to open it This side I couldn't get any more Meteor seed They were sold out so I've had to have Kelvin Wonder Which is similar but not quite as hardy as, Kel as the meteor but they'll be fine they'll, they'll show well again very small no problem we'll just get them in and uh, let them get on with it that's the thing but inside the fruit cage I don't have to worry about the birds etc coming in and getting them here's the peas wrinkly peas you can soak them if you want but that ground is wet enough for them I will just put a can of water on them when I've got them in the ground anyway now I've already put two rows in nothing showing yet but what I did 
on all these those other two rows and I'll do the same on this one I'll put some of this slow release in along the line because likewise again there'll be a shortage of nitrogen I'm sure just a sprinkling not a lot because you know peas etc will make their own nitrogen anyway I think it'll just give them it'll just give the plants that lift to get them going even though the floods didn't actually get this far but all the rain we've had did so it's as well to put a bit on now I just need to scatter you get lots and lots of peas so I just scatter a row in and if it's too congested we can thin it but normally you find it doesn't in the old days we'd have put put them down as a zigzag and used to spend hours putting them in a zigzag and then they all seem to grow anyway so both ways they'll grow you see those few that are left let me tip them on my hand there's only those few left so what I'm going to do I'm going to put those in as well because I don't really want to be saving a few like that I would sooner take some of the new crop and save that in jars at the end of the season we will put them where the others aren't if possible but just to get rid of them really I just covered them up with four prong this is a lot better soil than where we were with the potatoes just cover them and then then we just go down and just chomp them because I will also fetch a can of water down and put it on the top I, I did those like that Right, we'll get it finished and fetch the water and show you the feet finishing them. Half a can, plenty on those, just wet those peas, just let them swell up and then germinate a bit better. These raspberries, these are the summer flowering raspberries as regards those that side which are the autumn flowering. Now when these canes that grew up last year we tied them in for the winter when it comes to spring I always cut all the tops off and then you'll find that all these bottom shoots like this one that they'll all go on fruiting for a lot longer than if you just leave the tops like that this will fruit ever so well and sacrifice that so we'll take these off White. I don't want to see anything big up there at all. Because what that needs will continue growing and fruiting and sacrifice the bottom ones. It's quite a few, look. Yeah, we'll do that at the end. One, 
that one there sticking for a bit and take that off and it's better and that one not That's it. Now, be taking that top off, that will encourage all these bottom ones to send out fruiting shoots like these, and all this will continue fruiting where we can get to it rather than at the top. Now, it will be a lot better to have the fruit all the way down than just across the top, and I believe the fruit are a little bit better growing down here than up there in the sunshine and you get a lot more obviously now i've just noticed on these red currants we've got a little bit of blister mite the red pieces on the leaves it'll have a little mite in there and it makes this on every leaf and it will actually cover the whole plant it looks terrible the other thing to think of is the flowers are just setting so I need really to get this sprayed as soon as possible probably this afternoon I'll use that Pareterum that we bought this year just to give them it's a organic pesticide it's made actually from uh, Pareterum flowers which is quite unique but I will get it and get these sprayed I'll check all the fruit trees the currants and get them done obviously these that haven't come out yet but no doubt the blister beetle will be there somewhere and that's that's a must job I need to get that done to make life easier because it's only spotted about a little bit I might just do it with the hand sprayer and just spray it quickly now we've about completed out here um, we'll just nip in the shed and I'll show you what seeds I'm hoping to get in this week. The propagator is just about empty now. There's, I've set the celery and some basil and then I reset a few bullhorn peppers because I didn't think I had enough but now I see I have enough so they're going to be extras. These are the bakupa cuttings I use this instead of using it for seed this tray it's got all those cells in I can't lift it at the moment because I've only just put them in but the uh, there's 42 cuttings in there now these that are coming up they've been in a couple of weeks I'll be pulling it off in the next few days and having a look underneath and see if the roots are down. I'm sure they're rooting because they're looking so well. These are the seeds I'm hoping to set this next week or so. Di will just scan them so you can see what we're going to do. Now moving on quickly because Diane's flashing again so that'll be it for this week I hope you've enjoyed it do try and get on with your it's lovely to be back in the garden doing something after all this wind and rain I'll try and get all these seeds in best I can and hopefully we'll see you next week take care everyone bye now